بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله a question was asked Khalid Green Jazakallah Khair and I will look into that I have one more question I hope you can answer it for me so ever since I heard about the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam talked about the seventy three sects I've been asking Allah to guide me to the right path and Alhamdulillah I feel as though Allah has guided me to Salafia. But recently I was listening to a Salafi brother and he was talking about the four schools of thought and how only one of them was correct. But I was taught that all four are correct. That left me very confused. I hope you can clear this for me. I have been studying a little thick but I want to follow the correct way if there is only one way. Am I am so confused at the moment. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm and nafi, rizq and tayyib, wa amal and taqabbil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with hidayah, ihdina surat al mustaqeen, ya rabbil alameen, ya al hadi. Uh, first and foremost, ahabat tifillah, the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, if tarakatil yahud ala ihtu wa sab'een firqa, wa if tarakatil nasara ala ithnatayn wa sab'een firqa, wa sa taftariku hadhi umala thalatha wa sab'een firqa, kullaha finnar ila wahida. Kulna man hiya ya Rasulullah. Kala man kana ala mithi wa ma kana alayhi. Uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, the Jews will break into uh, uh, 71 sects, the Christians into 72 sects, and my ummah would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, they are those who upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon, radiyallahu ta'anhum. Ijma'een. So we learn from this hadith of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that he prophesied salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi that the ummah would break and divide. And I think this is something that's critical for us to understand, Habatifillah, that we have to really intrinsically uh, you know, take this on board and really reflect of what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this authentic hadith. And that that should let us know that we are, we already realize we're divided. But that that's prophecy. And it is not a good thing, it is madhmoom. But it is the reality and will remain the reality. That Ahl sunnah a mu'min in general, is always going to be small. They're always going to be a small group. The Prophet said, The Prophet said, There won't cease to be a group from amongst my nation <coughs> that continues to be on the truth. Uh, <coughs> and in another narration, And no one will harm them even if they differ with them until the hour is established. So that lets us know that in general, first, that there's always going to be a group on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ahl sunnah mawjood. So ahl sunnah, ahl athar, ahl hadith, salaf al-salih. Those who adhere to their methodology will always be present. They're always going to be around until the hour is established. Okay, so that'll be a sign that the hour is there, is that they're no longer there. And where evil will just become widespread and the people will sit. And subhanAllah, when we reflect, I'm not making a tazkiyah for any groups. I'm not saying uh, any groups are better or this and that. But I am saying those who truly follow the Salafi menhaj. I'm talking about true, truthfully. Salafiya haq. By Allah, in my studies, I can't think of anybody else who fits that, that criterion of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu when he said, "La tazal taifatum min ummati haq." When he said that there doesn't won't cease to be a group from my nation that's on the truth, and I'm telling you, look at all these mubtadiyah. I'm sorry, I'm going to go off on a tangent. I'm feeling it. Look at all these mubtadiyah. Some of these duat. Subhanallah, they're on, from the west and the east. They're calling. And they're calling as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Khattalana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khattan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam drew a line in the sand. And he said, Hadha uh, sabil Allah. He said, this is the path of Allah. Meaning it's a straight path. And it's a single path. 
and it doesn't go crooked and you can't say you're going to go this way or that way to get to Jannah. This way and that way is going to, you see the sunnah is going to get to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Nope. That's not what he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he said, <clears throat> the narrator said, Khatta lana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam khatta. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam drew a line in the sand. Thumma khatta ala yaminihi wa ala yasarihi. Then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam drew a line on the right and the left. And he said, Havihi subu. Those are the paths. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that at every head of the, those paths is a devil. That means there's going to be a lot of callers to Jahannam. People don't want to accept that. They want to say, oh, we're just all Muslim. It's okay, he's a Khwana Muslim. It's okay the Sufi says, if you see my Sheikh, you're going to go to Jinnah. It's okay that Hamza Yusuf says this and that. It's okay Yasser Qadi talks about this. It's okay that Nurman says this. And it's okay that the other guy is talking about the dollar bill is the Dijal. That's okay. Because we just have so many paths to Jinnah. Abedin. Abedin. Wallahi, if you study Islam, you'll see, no, it doesn't go with the text. It doesn't go with kitabi la wala sunnah rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam wala salaf asari wala minhaj salaf it just doesn't it doesn't jive it doesn't go with the nusus it doesn't go with the text which we are trying to follow we're trying to get to jannah so it's not a compromising path nor does it go the same nor is it right the way of the his being what i mean is the people who are calling the various groups and sects and what I mean is those people who claim to be Salafi, but in fact, they're just big Hezbis. I'm talking about them too. Because they're not calling you to Jannah. They're calling you to them. They're calling you to their one sheikh. They're calling you to innovative practices. They're calling you to speak ill about the ulama sunnah. They're calling you to reject. Well, Al-Albani is this. Bin Baz is this. Bin Uthameen is this. This, these are the people who make ta'an of the sun of the, the, the imams of the sunnah in this time. Imam Wa'adi is just this. But our Hariki Sheikh, he's on the right path. So what I want us to really reflect on is the importance of really doing talab al-ilm, seeking knowledge so you can know the truth for yourself, so you have some tools so you can see right from wrong, at least on a basic level. That's all I'm doing is a little on a basic level. Is a little bit going to the books, going to what we heard from the ulama, studying a little bit, and trying to, to me is minal, al khabith minal khair. You know, having some tools to be able to distinguish between truth and falsehood, to be able to string, distinguish between that which is wicked and that which is good. That's what elm's going to be, elm and nafia. Uh, uh, right, good knowledge. Now, to your question more specifically, we've established that. So you have to also remember this very important principle, which means that the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. The reality of something is in its substance, not in its name. For example, I could say, hey, I'm a Ku Klux Klan member. I'm a Ku Klux Klan member. And I'm going to hold a card for the Ku Klux Klan and rallies and everything. They're not going to accept that because I'm a black man and I could never fit their criterion for being a Ku Klux Klan. They are against black people. They lynch and have killed and terrorized black people for a long period of time since their existence. And that's what their asal is. Their foundation, their usul is built upon terror terrorism. So that's impossible. doesn't matter what I say. But the haqqaiq, the reality, is different than what I might claim. Likewise, there are people who say that they're Salafi. But the reality is you want to find those people who are practicing the principles of Salafi. They're practicing the Quran. They're practicing the Sunnah. They're practicing the Madhab of the Salaf, how they understood the religion. Now, when we talk about those A'imma, A'imma to deem, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam... Ahmed bin Hanbal, rahimahumullah jami'an, that they are all imams of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Now, with that being said, as Imam 
As the Prophet said, Kulub na Adam tawabun. All the children of Adam commit sins or makes mistakes. And the best of those who commit sins or make mistakes are those who repent. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Kulu yurad, Kulu yusibu yukhti illa sahiba hadhi, hadha qabr. So Imam Malik was teaching in the Prophet ﷺ's masjid. And he said that everyone gets some things right and get things wrong, except the inhabitant of that grave. And he pointed towards the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. That lets us know, Habatifillah, that even the A'immah to Sunnah make mistakes. Okay? Some made more mistakes than others, but still they were A'immah, to deen. They were imams of the deen, imams of the religion. Now, if you go back into the books, which is not really for us to really uh, bring up as a controversial issue and, and so forth, it suffices us to know that the imams now of Ahl Sunnah are in agreement about the uh, im, that those are the imams of this deen and the acceptance of Abu Hanifa, because Abu Hanifa is. Imam Abu Hanifa was a person of controversy because there were those from the Salaf who spoke really ill of him. And we're not going to get into that at all. And that's not necessarily a controversy for the average person to get into, but I'm just sharing that with you. And that's why you might see people speaking ill about that great Imam. And, of course, there were mistakes. There were mistakes. And all make mistakes. And some have greater and more mistakes than others. Fine. As far as a Salafi brother that you heard, I would say to check first to make sure that you were sure what you heard from him that he said that there's only one madhab. Because I don't know, I don't know any imams that say this. Imams of the Sunnah, I don't know that say there's only one madhab and that you should, even though, for example, here in Saudi Arabia, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah here and other than Ahl Sunnah. They, in general, generally, their madhab is within the madhab of the Hanabila. They're Hanbali. Not, I would say, they're not Hanbali uh, muta'asib, blindly prejudiced, meaning that that's how they learn their usul. That's the usul that they emphasize, is the usul of, uh, of Imam, Abu, uh, Imam Ahmed in fiqh, Okay. And those are the books that they teach, mainly Hanbali fiqh text. But they don't blind follow, nor do they encourage you to blind follow Imam Abu Hanifa. And you'll go to other places where you'll find Imams of Ahl Sunnah teaching other books from other madhabs. Why? Because those four Imams are Imams of the Deen. That the Ummah basically has accepted. So when you hear, so I don't know what you heard from a particular brother. And this could be a brother who is Salafi. I don't know. It's just from your claim. You said he's Salafi. And this could be a brother who's Salafi but has no knowledge. Or made a, a, a crazy mistake like that. But I would say that's a show, that's a sign of a naqs in ilm. That's a sign of a shortcoming in his knowledge. If he really said that. If he said there's only one uh, path or that we have to take a methab and blindly follow a methab, that's what I'm saying. So I would urge you, exhort you to go back and check to see what he said. As far as being confused, be thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding you. Continue to ask him for guidance and continue to seek knowledge and continue in your studies of fiqh and continue to study khair, and don't let people confuse you. Because your goal is not to just listen to speakers and then just blind follow. Nor is it to just question every single thing that someone says, but you want to go, you want to do the best that you can in seeking knowledge and have trustworthy teachers that can teach you what you need to know, not teach you to follow them. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.